all, we're Team Mills. They say teamwork makes the dream work, and we're here to tell you they were right. I'm John, the dreamer in logistics. I'm Megan, the caution and the creative. Together, we've spent the last 10 years raising babies and building multiple businesses from the ground up. One thing we know to be true, we couldn't have done it without each other. From late nights to early mornings, failures and successes, and the unbelievable joy of seeing our dreams come to life, we live and breathe entrepreneurship, and we know firsthand just how much work it takes. But we're not only business partners, we've been married for 10 years and have four beautiful kids who we homeschool in East Tennessee. We want to instill these life skills and values in our children and do life alongside them. We believe life is better as a team in every area. No one can do it alone. So our hope in this podcast is to walk alongside you, encourage you, and maybe teach you a thing or two about running a business and just life in general. So let's get to work and learn something new. Welcome to our very first episode of our very own podcast. Oh man, this is awesome. We're so excited. I am pumped, dude. This is I am pumped. <laughs> <laughs> so pumped. We have been waiting for this, preparing for this, eager to start, and here we are. Yeah, it's been a while. I know. This is something that John and I have talked about for a long time, wanting to do. And we mentioned in our little like sneak peek teaser of the podcast coming that the opportunity presented itself when we were asked to be on the Chroma Creative Podcast, and they did an interview of us and turned that into two episodes. And then Jordy reached out to us a couple days later and was like, so I think you guys need to have your own podcast. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I squealed. You like, did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were blown away by the just uh, the professionalism of the setup yeah. and uh, how it would just take so much less work really from us with editing and everything. Right. And it just worked out. We just thought it would be a perfect team with us. Right. Yeah. We wanted to do it for so long, but we didn't want to like learn anything new. I didn't yeah. want to learn how to edit a podcast. I didn't want to find time to, you know, go hide ourselves in the closet when yeah. kids weren't screaming or whatever. We and only got 24 hours in the day. So uh, we can't spend most of that trying to edit our own podcast. No. And I knew I wanted to be like next level. Yeah. So when they asked, we were like, um, dream team come true. No brainer. Yeah. No brainer. And I'm usually the one that is hesitant with this. Yeah. But it wasn't this time. So whenever I said, hey, babe, we're actually going to do a podcast, were you initially like, okay, I'm doing this for my wife? Or were you excited? I s initially started researching how to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. As you know, that's how my brain works. Because <laughs> that is who you are. Yeah. Then uh, I was terrified. <laughs> are you still terrified? <laughs> I am. No, actually. No, we're in good hands. So. Okay. Yes, we are. <laughs> and we enjoy talking. So we're excited for this. So in today's episode, we want to jump into kind of what our vision is for this podcast, mm -hmm. our goal, why we're doing it, um, as well as a little bit of our backstory. We know a lot of people already know our story from following us on Instagram um, and then hearing other interviews we've done because we've been interviewed by a couple other podcasts as well. Um, and we always share our history uh, because that's usually the topic of conversation. But there might be new faces, new people around who want to know a little bit about us. So that's kind of our hopes. And this episode is that we can kind of bring you up to speed on how we got to where we are and uh, share a little bit of the last decade of our life. And there's some stuff that we haven't even talked about before this that we're going to so talk true. about now. We're sharing a secret today. Yeah, there is a secret. There was a failed business, guys. <laughs> There's two failed businesses. <laughs> that's true. There were two. And yeah. we're sharing both of them. And I don't think one of them we I know we've never shared about. Yep, that's true. So there's that in a nutshell. We'll oh, get yeah. to that though. But before we do, we want to do something fun. In every single episode of the podcast, we'll be doing something called a community spotlight. And our goal in that is to just shout out somebody who follows along with us that we want to say, hey, we see you and we appreciate you. It's somebody who's engaged through DMs that's constantly talking back and forth with me. There's a lot of people that I feel like I know at this mm -hmm. point, even though I've never actually met them. That's the beauty of the internet. And I'm excited because they won't know it's coming and hopefully they'll hear this podcast. Might have to like send them a message and just say, <laughs> listen in. Um, but we want to just say, hey, and thank you for yeah. being here. I think that's pretty fun. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so today's podcast community spotlight is Faith Lee Lewin on Faith. Instagram. She's awesome. She's awesome. Do you know who Faith is? Yes. <laughs> she actually, you probably do because yeah. she used to buy makeup from me. Yeah. I'm, I know I've probably made plenty of labels that said Faith on it. So yes. That name I recognize. Yes. She has bought plenty of makeup. She has followed from back on the Megan Mills account, which we'll get into today. Um, but that was my like blogging lifestyle account. 
and she followed there, came over when I started the Modern Tulip for Senegent's makeup, and then she's also follows along at the Cookie Crate. She's been with us probably for about seven years. Yeah. She also sent us a gift when Cree was born from her little Etsy shop. That's cool. Called um, Little Rose Boutique. Yes, I do recognize that name too. Yeah, I love it. So I wanted to give Faith a shout out today and just say that we appreciate you. We see you. John recognizes your name. That's how much we love you. (laughs) And thank you so much for just supporting all the time that you have. All right. So you want to jump into kind of the goal and the vision for this podcast? Well, before that. It's airing on your birthday. Oh, so is. you will be turning 31 Yay. April 22nd when we launch this episode. There's so. nothing to be excited about for 31. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to be 30 for so long. And no joke. For a year, she was like, I cannot wait till you turn 30. And I'm like, when you turn 30, honey, things happen. It's not that exciting, but she was all about turning 30. So uh, that happened. And then it passed really quickly. And now she's going to be turning 31. <laughs> <laughs> now there's nothing exciting. She's like, hmm. Okay, this is not exciting. Jennifer Garner ruined me for 13 going on 30, the Uh, movie. I'm sure you didn't care about that movie. But growing up, that was like the teenage movie. Yeah. And she ruined me. I was like, oh, 30 is going to be glamorous. You got so influenced. 30 has been wonderful. (laughs) I loved it. But 31, there's just nothing hype about that. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing for the rest of our Just some hormonal chin acne. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Love it. Okay. So happy birthday. Thanks, babe. So jumping into what we can share with everyone that they can expect from the podcast. So how many episodes are we going to be releasing? We're going to do two a month. So every other week we're going to, we're going to launch a new episode, which, which is a lot of episodes actually. Yeah. You know, we really never thought we would be doing that many of them. Shout out to know. Chroma for, for Chroma. <laughs> recording, editing, hosting all of it. <laughs> yes, definitely. So because of them, that's why we're able to do it. So uh, we're very thankful for their time and their effort uh, in, you know, how they, what they do. Yeah. And we came to this decision, um, of, of doing this too, because it was sustainable for our family, which I was really grateful for Jordy when he sat down to talk to us about what we could do. Um, he's got a family, three girls. And so he was very much in the mindset of like, okay, this is a family who's running businesses. They have four kids, all the things going on. Like, how can we make this possible, but not overwhelming? And so that's kind of how we came to that. And John and I, you'll hear in our backstory today with how much we've done in the last decade is absolutely insane. I'm not tooting our horns. I'm actually saying like, y'all crazy. (laughs) There's Uh, a lot of stuff we probably shouldn't have done. Probably. we did it. Absolutely, actually. But we did it. And now fast forward to where we are. We think twice before we say yes to things. Yeah, that's true. We try to be a little bit more intentional about, okay, this commitment, what's this going to do? Is this going to affect our family? How Mm -hmm. is it going to bring us joy? Is it making an impact? Like if we can check certain boxes, then we'll say yes. If we can't, there's things we'll say no to. We actually did that the other day. Somebody asked us to do something on Monday. And unfortunately, I mean, we would love to do it, but we just couldn't fit it in our schedule. No, this is so true. We were asked to speak at a business event and I, we were in a group text with this person and they sent the message and I stared at it for like 20 minutes <laughs> trying to figure out how to respond because my heart was like, yes, yep. because I love speaking. I was too. Yeah. Yeah. This is like something in our wheelhouse. We love doing it. We've done it before. And I really wanted to say yes. Plus, I'm a people pleaser. I knew this person was in a pinch and needed somebody to fill in. And then John sent the message. I saw the little dots typing. I was like, okay, I'm going to wait and see what John says. <laughs> He's and he was say like, yes, our and calendar's full. Yep. <laughs> and I was instantly so proud of you for like not yes. overwhelming. Because I'm pretty sure we already had like soccer practice and other things. Oh, like yeah. we would have had to move the schedule. Yeah. So high five to you. High five. <laughs> Teamwork. <laughs> So cheesy, you guys. But our podcast is also, so it's available anywhere you can listen to podcasts, but then it's also going to be on YouTube. And the Mm -hmm. reason that we did that, um, one, also shout out to Chroma because they said we could, (laughs) (laughs) but also because we had a lot of people on Instagram saying like, I don't listen to podcasts because I'm too ADD. I can't pay attention. So I'm more of a visual person, which is why I like Instagram stories. So that hopefully on the, on YouTube will be more of an extension for visual people who want to sit and watch. I can't imagine how this would be entertaining to sit and watch us talk, but (laughs) if you want to, kudos to you. Yeah. So we've said before too, this is an extension of Instagram. We'll share everything 
that we already do on Instagram, but just in a platform where we can talk more because a lot of times we get questions over there, whether it's business or motherhood or homeschool Mm -hmm. that I love to share on and I want to give so much more feedback, but there's just not the time or the place on stories. You don't need to have 50 stories up in a day. Um, And then also there's a lot of things that John needs to talk to about business and stuff like I'm not the business savvy person over here. I've learned a lot, yeah. but it's because of John. You are turning into one because of you. Yeah. Well, you, you were forced into, it, I think, but this is. But true. now you got you got hooked. So now you got the you got the bug and, yes. and you're loving it and learning. So thank you. I am. You're I am enjoying great. it. Thanks, babe. Yeah. So we will be able to extend more on all of these topics here, and I'm excited for you guys to learn or not even just learn, but hear from John because he doesn't get enough credit where credit's due. Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot. Thank you, sweetheart. (laughs) But really though, like the credit is, needs to be there because so much of people just, they just see my face and they hear me talking and they don't actually know like so much of behind the scenes as you. So I'm excited for people to hear you and like know, you know, they've seen your goofy side. They've only seen like your daddy takeover (laughs) days on Instagram, which we need to hear. That's mostly how I am, right? This is true. You're goofy a lot of the time, but you're smart too. So I'm excited for people to know it. Yeah. I'm excited to share a little bit of just a little bit of what I kind of know. Yes. So P.S. Can we bring back daddy takeover days on Instagram occasionally? We need to. Yes. I need to get back in there. I'm not sure why I stopped. I don't either. I don't know. But yes, I will definitely bring that back. Okay, cool. I'll put a poll up on Instagram. You guys can let us know if you want to see daddy (laughs) takeover days come back. (laughs) Oh man. So let's talk a little bit about the name. And where that came yes. from. So our podcast. Yeah. Is so it's teamwork. With John and Megan Mills. With John and Megan Mills. And really, I mean, that is our life. Uh, you know, ever since we got married, it has been teamwork. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we went through challenges and we had to learn from each other and, you know, what you were good at, what I was good at. And uh, I think now after basically 10 years, um, we know when one of us is struggling with something that the other one just steps up. Yeah, and that's in business, that's in home life and parenting. Uh, we know when another one, the other person needs a break and the other one comes in and, and takes over. So, so true. Yeah. Everything we do is really actually teamwork. I mean, it's, it, once we said, came up with this name, it just makes sense because when we look back at, you know, the last 10 years, I mean, it's just teamwork, teamwork, teamwork over and over. Yeah. in everything that we do. No. Nope. Yep. I agree. And that's not to toot our own horns because no. we definitely struggle and fail in a lot of aspects. For sure. And we are never perfect. We are flesh. Yep. We're still <laughs> not learning, perfect. learning every day. Exactly. But the source of it is that we always come back to being one as a team yep. in Christ. And we will always hold firm to that because there's strength in that. And we know that even when we're weak and weary and failing, we can come together and there's grace, yep. <laughs> lots and lots of grace. And we do it together. I love um, 1 Corinthians 1.1. 1, 1. It says, Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man, and man is not independent of woman. And I love that because God created Eve for Adam. Mm-hmm. Like He created community in the first week of the world coming together. I thought that was so neat. And a man can't exist without a woman's womb. Yeah. So it's like we can't be independent of each other. We come together, and we're better off together. And yeah. God created community for a reason, relationship. Yeah, I think both of us, you know, in a marriage needs to see that. Um, And then once you see that, then that's when the teamwork, you know, starts. That's when you can see when you can help each other out and, uh, you know, grow together in the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like I need to give a shout out to to one of our best friends, Emma Stedman, for coming up with our name and Good our job, intro. <laughs> she, She's so smart. She is. I told her we were starting a podcast and she got all hyped. She's always a cheerleader in our corner. And she yeah. like texted me the next morning. She's like, OK, I've come up with your name and your intro. If you hate it, fine. Scratch all of it. But I couldn't sleep last night. So here it is. Yeah. <laughs> she came up with it at like 1 a.m. <laughs> so thank you, Emma, for all of your all of your help. Yeah, we love you. Great. Okay, so do you want to start jumping into our backstory? Sure, we can. Let's go back, before we go back 10 years ago, Okay. to like when everything started, Mm -hmm. let's go back a little bit further. Did you graduate college? No, I didn't. How many colleges did you go to, John? (laughs) Okay, well, I'm not a very good student. (laughs) Uh, My mind's, I can't focus. So, um, yeah, of course, I graduated high school. Okay, so to me on Yay. that one. Um, but I, you know, I went to, uh, ETSU. Well, I went to UT first cause I thought I was going to play football. 
and tried out there and that just didn't work out. So I was there for a year and a half. John was called um, Flash Mills in I high was. school, just so you guys know. He's really fast. I was not named. I did not name myself that, <laughs> even though the paper. The reporter said you the, did. Okay. The reporter did say that. We found the original newspaper because my mom keeps everything oh, um, of all my my history classic. and sports and stuff. But it did say that John said to call him Flash. I loved it. I read that and I was like, you've lied. All I never knew years. that. I don't think that was actually accurate. But. Anyways, if it was, I'm Flash. Uh, flash meals, actually. And uh, I was very fast. <laughs> I'm picturing like the Cars movie. It's like, ka-chow. You're like, I'm Flash Mills. <laughs> Finger guns. Okay, so what happened after UT? Okay, yeah. So UT, uh, that didn't work out. And then so I figured um, I still want to play football. And so um, Emory and Henry College uh, reached out and they wanted me to play football there. So I went to Emory Henry for a semester and played football there. Um, for the whole football season. And uh, after having a year and a half off of not doing anything, I realized I, realized I didn't want to play sports because uh, it was like a full-time job. You're yeah. constantly working out, thinking about sports and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that lasted a semester. Then I went to ETSU, did that for a few years, and then never graduated. <laughs> so I think I went to school for five years. With nothing to show for <laughs> With it. nothing. Have you apologized to your mom and dad? I have multiple times. Okay. Um, and I will... I'll pay them back eventually because <laughs> no, <you won't. laughs> they, they actually did pay for schooling. So, and that's one reason why we will not pay for our kids schooling. Yeah. <laughs> we Sorry for anyone else. who doesn't agree with that, but we plan to put money towards our kids uh, down payment on their first home versus a college fund. For sure. I, I think if I had to pay for schooling for myself, I think you would, would have, have respected been, it more. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that just, uh, it just didn't work out for me. That's okay. Everything happens for a reason, but you're successful. I wanted you to share that <laughs> because I think it's just, you know, a testament. So many people think you have to like have degrees and things to be successful. And I think degrees are fantastic and you do for yeah, certain, certain areas, fields, yeah. but there's also success in not finishing yeah, school and people are lot. still smart, even if you're just, you know, not good in the school setting. Right. Yeah, definitely. I went to um, a community college for a year and a half after I graduated high school I was working simultaneously at Chick-fil-A as a marketing director, which is so funny because now I do marketing for a living and That's that was crazy. not, that was just a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were young too when you were doing that. I was, I started as just like a team member and worked up within two years to marketing director and worked as a marketing director for two more years. But simultaneously I was at community college, realized I have no idea what I want to do with anything. And I'm just wasting time, hated it so much, despise school, every part about it. Um, which is also ironic because I homeschool now and literally <laughs> teach our children. <laughs> it, is, it definitely is. Yeah. Everything's just like full circle irony over here. I don't, I believe God has a sense of humor. Um, so while I was working at Chick-fil-A, I decided I would start doing ride alongs in, uh, Boone a local at the local police department. And so I was doing those and was like, I love this. I want to be a police officer. So that's why I joined the police Academy in 2011 and did that. That was a whirlwind. I will never do it again, but it was amazing. And I totally <laughs> learned so much about discipline and strength. Um, but then I graduated that in 2012 and that's kind of where John and I's story begins. We met um, when I was starting the police academy. No, did we meet before that or during? I think it was during. I think it was too. What I know that it? during. Six months? Yeah, we only dated six months and yeah. then we were married or engaged six months. Um, so anyway, I know that as soon as I graduated the police academy, I got offered a job at Boone PD and John was like, whoa, 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 whoa. She's about to put down roots. Hey girl, you want to marry me? Yeah. You want to come to Tennessee? <laughs> I was like, I hate Tennessee, but I love you. So I will. <laughs> I am here to say I was wrong. Tennessee's fantastic. That's right. I love Volunteer it. Volunteer state. Go Vols. <laughs> so that's kind of where our backstory, quick version of our backstory. That's where we'll begin with a company that John started. Yep. Um, and I joined when we got married and that's where it all begins. Yeah. So, uh, when I got out of college and did not graduate, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I picked up a job at a part store that sold lawnmower parts. Um, you know, just fast forward past that, that business went out of business. Uh, and I decided to start my own lawnmower parts business is an e-commerce business, which was discount online parts. Um, started that in 08. And, um, from there, you know, in 2011, we bought out another company, cheap online parts with my parents. 
Um, which, which was like the same thing, right? Which was the same thing. And it was actually the same company I worked for before, um, but they just weren't doing good and they were going out of business. So we were able to buy their inventory and the name and the website, um, not knowing that the website was junk <laughs> <laughs> and the, the inventory that we bought was junk too. So um, it was a very, it, it was not a wise decision on buying that business. Um, and we kept it long for probably another five years and then we eventually just dissolved it way longer than it should have been kept. Yes. That was a learning curve for us. It was. Yeah. And, and really what happened, it was just the website got hacked and then we were scared and we were new with it. So we just built a new website and the guy that built it just uh, did not do a good job with it. And we lost, you know, 10 years worth of Google's listings mm -hmm. um, overnight and it never came back. Yep. So that is one failed business that nobody yeah. has ever really heard about. Yeah. Cheap online. Okay. Yeah. So we have discount. Cheap online's dissolved. Yep. What's next? Yep. And well, you were working with uh, discount in 2012. Guys, I, I was guess. selling lawnmower parts. I was talking to men <laughs> on the phone all day, every day about sprockets and chainsaw gears and how to fix their blades and all of these things. I know more about a chainsaw. Well, not anymore, but I did more than <laughs> I did, ever yeah. wanted to know yeah. and lawnmowers. <laughs> and you would always come up with a story and you still talk about it where I put you in the warehouse in the wintertime Freezing with cold. no heat in there to count inventory. He did. <laughs> Before the end of the year. I was like, I is this initiation this. into being a newlywed? I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> Had to make sure you were willing to work. Uh, if anything, I was grateful for it because it got me away from the phones, which I was like, I don't want to talk about landscaping equipment anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I did it. We did it. So that was my first taste of business with John. It was. And I do remember those days where, <sighs> you know, you, you know, I worked a lot. Mm -hmm. And I was used to working a lot. So I wasn't used to, you know, having someone else at the house and, you know, being married. And I was fine with working, you know, 14 hour days mm -hmm. if I had to. Uh, but when we got married, you know, I know that was a little bit of a, a struggle between both of us and you seeing those hours and not understanding that and saying that, I, you know, we didn't have to work that many hours. Yeah. It was um, a shock to me. I was like, that we always talked about business. Right? Yeah, or it I was did. always business. When we went, got up, we went to work, we came home. It was like business, business, business. And that's still that very tough. true today. Yeah. But now we have boundaries. And now it's, like and now it's both about of it. us. <laughs> I know I was going <laughs> to say. Before, you did not like talking about no. it. And we had some issues. But that's now true. you're like, you're the one who brings up stuff. <laughs> this is very <laughs> before true. Before you go to bed. Yeah. Right? And Things talk have about evolved. Ideas. So <laughs> it's, it's really cool to see how you transformed from you know, 2012 and now, and when it comes to business and yeah. uh, your passion for it. It's all you. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we got in 2014 is when you were pregnant with Maddox and you decided to do the blog, right? Yeah. Cause I, once we had Maddox, I literally went into labor with him on a ladder in the warehouse at discount. So that <laughs> you did. I did. Yeah. You were like, on a ladder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a week passed. Yep. Yeah. No, two oh, weeks passed. Two weeks passed. I went so. to 42 weeks in every single pregnancy. Yeah. All four. My body likes to hold the babies. Yeah. And you were on a ladder, so I you're welcome for mm -hmm. inducing you. Oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> I should have been at home with my feet up because I was about to have a newborn and I should have known that I needed rest. Can't do prior. that when you're a small business. Well, I mean, technically <laughs> you probably could have. It wouldn't have been great. But looking back in retrospect, I would tell newly first time pregnant mom, Megan, Hey, put your feet up for a hot second. It's about to get real busy. <laughs> yes, definitely. I think you should have, I but apologize. I did go into labor on the ladder. So I worked up until the day I had Maddox. And then all of a sudden I was at home. I was working 14 hour days and then all of a sudden nothing. I was at home with this baby that I didn't know what to do with. You know, mm -hmm. I loved every second of it. Well, actually, <laughs> let's be honest. I had postpartum let's depression with Maddox. Yeah. I did not love every second of it, but I was so excited to finally have what I had begged God for. I wanted to be a mom so bad. Um, and so going from having being at a business all day long and having my mind, you know, strained to nothing was really hard. And so I struggled through that postpartum depression with like finding myself and knowing what my new identity looked mm -hmm. like. And, um, I wasn't as far in my walk with Christ as I am now either. So I just wasn't at the best place ever. And that was hard to see. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I probably wasn't the best wife during that time. No, no, you were fine. But that's when I decided to start the blog. I loved reading blogs because it gave me a sense of like, 
um, solidarity with other people. I got to like see their lives and peaks and glimpses into their lives. And I was like, I want to share mine too. And I feel like it would give me an outlet. So we started the blog. I started the blog. You did. But John took all my pictures. He was a champ. <laughs> oh, man. We yes, would, we did. We would take pictures all yes. over the place. <laughs> it was. And it was tough, too, because like Max would be screaming in the background. And, <laughs> like it just never worked out good. It was always a super stressful situation. Yeah. I didn't like to be in front of people and like make a scene, trying to take pictures of you. You didn't really like that either. I didn't like people looking at me. Yeah. yeah. But so, we did it. Yeah. So it was like a lifestyle blog, but I still did a lot of, more of like fashion because I love clothes and I love to share that. So we would do a lot of styled photography of me wearing outfits and you know I got a little bit bigger and got my pace and clothing companies started sending me clothes and so I would do you know kind of more of that kind of styled shoots for their Mm -hmm. companies so it did good they got baby stuff but we quit that I stopped the blog um when Emery was born it just became too much with two toddlers a few years down the road but in between the blog being started. What happened next? John's keeping us on our timeline here. Yes, I am. Um, then you started the makeup. That's right. Right? No, wait, you're missing something. What am I missing? The failed business. Oh, I am missing the business that failed. So... Yeah, not. Any, I don't think anybody knows about this business, but no. it was Megan's clothing company, I guess. I feel shame, like just sitting in the seat. And I don't remember why we thought that was a good idea. I think because I liked clothing so much Mm -hmm. and I was like, I want to do something that's a business. The blog was just like side income. It wasn't a lot. And more or less, I was doing most things for free, just like sending me free clothes in exchange for posting about it or diaper bags or whatever. I wasn't really getting paid very often to do much of Mm -hmm. anything, which was fine. I loved the free things. Um, But then I decided I wanted to sell clothes. And guys, when I say it was a bust, like, I need you to know it was a bust. The clothing was not even like level of clothing I wear now, like not even that I wear anything expensive, but it wasn't even like nice boutique type clothing. It was like from China. Yeah, we had no clue. We had no clue what we were doing. The jewelry was trinkety and cheap and I should have never sold it. Like, I feel like we had zero taste when we did that. I was putting synthetic tulips in the boxes as like, (laughs) that was cool. (laughs) When you open your box, you got a a fake synthetic tulip on top of your clothing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We just, we didn't really know. I mean, what we know now as far as quality, No, you know, for customers, none whatsoever. So we, that ended real quick. Like I just, it wasn't great. There wasn't yeah. a lot of traction on it. So and I, that was a real business. We had an LLC and everything. Oh, yeah. LLC website. We were ready to go. Yep. Because if we do something, we go all in, yep. unfortunately. So there's been money lost, yes. lots of money lost yeah. in our past and Definitely. lots of mistakes and lessons learned. But that's just exactly what it is. You got to take a leap to learn, right? You do. Yeah. Yeah. You might have 10 uh, fail failures, but then you have what, one success. Right. Right. And I think that's most businesses do I that. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So. The Modern Tulip Boutique fails miserably. (laughs) And then I start doing Cinegen's makeup. You did. Yeah. And how did you get into that? Emma. I blame Emma. She, well, I used it for like a year and a half. And once the blog was over, I was still using my Instagram to kind of be air quotes, influ- an influencer. So and still she found sharing. you from the blog, I think. She did. Right? During okay. pregnancy, her pregnancy with Darcy was the same. Like she was following along and tracking with my pregnancy with Maddox. Yeah. And so she was like watching, they're a month apart. And so she was watching like my pregnancy updates as I would share them. Um, so that's how she found me. And um, we weren't really like anything other than just Instagram following mm-hmm. friends. And I was wearing Cinegen's makeup. I would do makeup tutorials and stuff, you know, but I'd always be like, I don't sell this. I just yep, use it. I remember that. Yeah. I'm never going to sell it. I'm never going to do an MLM. Yeah. yeah. Don't tell me to do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Megan. Oh, naive Megan. <laughs> so Emma reached out and was like, Hey, just so you know, I think you'd be really good at this, you know, no pressure, but I think you'd be really good at it. So if you want to talk, we can talk. And I think we stayed up until midnight or 1 a.m. talking. And before I knew it, I was like, we're doing this. Because I had been uh, thinking about doing a couple other things, like maybe starting a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I had like a couple things in mind. But everything was like going to take away time from the kids and like be very just not fit into our lifestyle as it was at that time. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I feel like I can do this and make a way for MLM in a different 
way than it is mm-hmm. normally perceived by people. And I owe Emma so much credit for teaching me about branding. Like I truly don't think I could do the branding that I've done for the cookie crate or for Mimi's or other businesses that were, we'll get to in a minute. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, or, you know, for the modern tulip, anything that I've done, had I not learned that through her, because she showed me that you can take an MLM product where everyone's selling the exact same thing and turn it into a small business feel. And we were successful with that. I think at one point, um, I was top six or top seven in the company. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and we did a really good job and had a lot of fun. No, you did amazing. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was all you, I was just the, the hands and the labor in the middle of the night to help you, uh, <laughs> produce <laughs> and actually ship out all the makeup and actually yeah. ordering the parts and stuff like that. So, but it was interesting cause I was very hesitant with that business when I heard about it the first time. Cause I was like, I never knew about it. I'm like, okay, so you're selling makeup and you get, I just, you know, I, I couldn't wrap my head around the, right. The business side of it, but um, you, we did our research and prayed about it and, and and took the leap. Yep, we did, and it was a success. That was great, yeah. And if it wasn't for, we're skipping a business here, but if it wasn't for the Modern Tulip doing um, Senegents, that's when we started putting cookies in packages, which comes from one business we'll talk about next. Yep. It wouldn't, the cookie crate wouldn't exist. So it's so cool to see the past and what God did. And we didn't understand why he was doing that. Um, if you didn't do that blog, you wouldn't have met Emma. Right. And that wouldn't have turned into all the things that happened this last few years. So it's so cool to see if you really just take the time and look back on your past and see, uh, the path that you've taken Mm -hmm. and that God's put you in and where he's led you. It's so cool. It really see, is. It really is. It. it makes my eyes well up with tears because it's just that. like, I'm not going to. I'm not going to cry. That'd be embarrassing. But like, he's good. He's yeah. good like that. Yeah, he totally is. Yeah. <laughs> it's just really cool. So I'm not one for, I've always been really bad at reflection, but because we've done yep. interviews in the past about like our backstory, we've had to reflect a lot on what it's looked like and more so this year than anything. Because like I said, we're coming up on 10 years of marriage and we've done a lot in 10 years. So it seems like we've done more reflection in the last couple of months than we've ever done. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, people need to do this more often because then you actually see things to be grateful for. Like things that didn't make sense, it might make sense now. Like I hadn't even thought about the fact that we met her through the blog. Yeah. And so if we hadn't have done that, then we wouldn't be where we are. Crazy. Like so <laughs> bizarre. not crazy? Yes. Okay. No. So talk about Mimi's. That's the next business. Sure. Yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> when did that start? Yeah. Well, we decided during the makeup that everybody with uh, these type of makeup businesses would always include some kind of free gift, you know, and if you buy over a certain amount, the gift gets nicer and nicer. Um, and, you know, so it's kind of about the experience when the customer gets their package. Um, so I can't remember. It's one of us came up with the idea that we'll just throw the, a, uh, a cookie in there, right? Right. But Mimi's was already oh, yeah, established Mimi's, before that. So yeah. when did Mimi's? I was pregnant gotcha. with Emery. I yeah, just don't so remember what year that Mimi's was. Mimi's started in... Well, 16. Yeah, 2016, we bought our first commercial building. Okay, and we did this because we, you know, we, we were tired of rent leasing from from uh, landlords. So we we were able to actually buy our own building. Uh, during that same year, that's when we started Mimi's. Okay. And what kind of gave us the idea is there was no ice cream in downtown Johnson City. Yeah. And we wanted the old school. We didn't want the soft serve. We didn't want a, um, you know, milkshake style or a, uh, was that fizz, that one place that was a, kind of root beer float type oh, feeling yeah. to it. We wanted real, just, I want a scoop of ice cream. Um, and nobody had it down downtown. Um, so that kind of got our, our brains rolling. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's the same time when I was doing a bunch of projects with cars. Mm-hmm. And you said, I can't buy another car. Mm-hmm. Um, so I found Sometimes a... I give John <laughs> rules and boundaries. And sometimes he listens. You do. You do, but... <laughs> and sometimes he finds his way around them. <laughs> yes. And this time I did find my way around them. So we had to cure the issue with no ice cream downtown John City. So I wanted ice cream downtown John City. And then I also wanted another car. So that's when I found this really cool 1956 Truman Olson uh, mm-hmm. van. It's all aluminum. Um, it was like a, a chips company truck. Oh, uh, yeah, it was, was Lay's. It? it was Lay's chips, I think. Yep. And it had the logo on the side. And I'm like, dude, I got to have that. So I worked out the deal, bought that, and bought it not to have it as far as what I told Meg to restore, to have a cool car but actually to start a business with it. So he's like, look, I got a new project, but I'm going to make income from it. So does that make it okay? And it did. (laughs) 
So we uh, we had our brother in law Jimmy to come up with uh, uh, the logo for Mimi's, mm-hmm. and the Mimi's name we came from. Uh, my mom is called Mimi. Yeah, by all, all the grandchildren. grandchildren. And she always baked cookies growing up. So every time when you came home, there was always fresh cookies, and it smelled like cookies in our house. Mm-hmm. And we always put ice cream on cookies. Right. Yeah. That's like a family tradition at their house. When we ever, we have like big family get togethers, they're always getting ice cream and her fresh cookies out of the oven, putting them in a bowl and making like sandwiches or sundaes out of them. And we always said, we need to figure out how to get people to get your cookies. You know, you could sell a lot of these cookies. We just got to figure out how to do it. And of course, you know, they weren't in a position to actually want to start a business. Um, So that's where we came up with the name. We were like, well, we'll just do it. And what we'll do is we'll have Mimi make our cookies for us. And then we're going to get ice cream and we're going to make cool ice cream sandwiches. Not just any ice cream, Bluebell ice cream. Yeah. And we did Bluebell. Yep. We had to get Bluebell. So it worked out great that another local, um, I guess, ice cream shop stopped using Bluebell. So there was an opening for us to get Bluebell. So we worked out a deal with them. And, um, you know, so we made these really kind of gourmet looking big fat ice cream homemade cookie ice cream sandwiches that we would do all kinds of toppings on it. And, uh, they were, they were a huge man. These were huge they ice were cream sandwiches. the so size of a man's hand. Yeah, they were huge, way too much ice cream, but I like a lot of ice cream and I like cookies. So John um, likes sweets. If anybody yeah. hasn't figured that out by now, I want a big bowl <laughs> of sweets, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. We started Mimi's. We, yeah. we were like, let's put two and two together. And we got the truck wrapped started selling ice cream cookie sandwiches. Yeah. And it worked out great because, uh, actually I, a friend I went to high school with was the general manager of Yeehaw Brewing, uh, in downtown Johnson city. And they had this one parking spot that I would always see. And it was like parallel to the main road. And as far as food trucks, you can't park on the main streets, downtown Johnson city. Mm-hmm. So you had to find private property. I worked out a deal with him to let us sit there. I was like, Hey, we'll sit there. We'll bring customers, uh, to your business. And uh, since you guys don't do desserts and uh, it will be a win-win for everybody. And man, we got that spot and it was game changer. Yeah. It was very successful during its time. It was. Yeah. I mean, we had a, we were just looking at a newspaper (laughs) clipping last night when we were looking through our file system and saw a clipping of, it might've been the first year or something like that, but there was, I don't know, probably Probably, 90 people in line. The line was Um, back around the building. It was crazy. Yeah. So it, it just blew up our social media Meg was doing that, um, and she was using what she learned with uh, her makeup, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, just use that just to expand your knowledge. Yeah, yeah. I was even pregnant in the truck with Emery working in it. Passed out once in a hot box. It was an <laughs> aluminum did. truck. I passed out cold in the floor, yeah. scooping ice cream. <laughs> yeah, we're like, okay, yeah, you're, yeah. yeah Can yeah, I put my lad, feet up now, John? The first time, <laughs> and then you passed out scooping ice cream second um, time. John overworks me. I'd like everybody <laughs> to hear not. that. <laughs> I kidding. guarantee what probably happened. I told her not to come. That she needed a rest and she's stubborn and was like, no, I'm going to do it. 100% you can't tell valid. tell me not to do this. I can do this. That is definitely probably yeah. what happened. <laughs> but then I got blamed for it for the rest in the last, next 10 years. <laughs> you know, that's what we're here for. Yeah. Okay. So we started Mimi's. We're running that. And then we're selling makeup simultaneously mm-hmm. on the side. We did have employees for Mimi's. So it wasn't just John and I running it. I mean, we did a lot. Um, yeah, we had a lot of college students that were running it yeah. for us. So had that too. And, and we then, still had discounts. So we still had the, so we had really three businesses going right then. Yep. Yep. Three businesses going at one time with two babies. Mm-hmm. So that was a lot in and of itself. Then what comes next? In 2017, uh, we knew we found this really big building. Well, I found this really big building. Of course you found it. Cause I'm always dreaming. Me. Well, we had this ice cream truck and then we had the parts store and we were in this small building and we had no space. Uh, and I knew we needed a newer building. Um, and this huge building, I think the building that we had before was like right under 3000 square feet. And I found this really cool big building that had multiple buildings in a building. And it also had a garage, a couple garages, actually. I think you just said building like 476 times. Yeah. And the buildings were buildings <laughs> and they're the building was big. Was big. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's a huge space. It, it was, was a huge space. How much square feet is it? I think it was like 15,000 square feet. Um, so I remember you taking me over there and me being like, are you joking right now? Like <laughs> we have three businesses, two toddlers. What are we doing? Yes. Do you ever stop? No, no the answer is no. He I doesn't ever stop. No, unfortunately, I'm learning how to slow down more. Now You are. It's just amazing how that building worked out. It um, is now. Fast forward to where we are. It is. I like 
shocking. Yeah. As to First, what it how means. we got it. And then second, what is being used for now? Right. You know? So, um, so we sold our old building and we were able to buy that building for a really good price because mm-hmm. it needed to be worked, worked on quite a bit. And that's what we usually do. We buy stuff that needs work <sighs> and then we fix it ourselves. I know you're saying this right now to me because John always reminds me like we don't get to buy everything brand sparkly and new. We We buy used things and we fix them up because they have potential. And I'm like, but I just want to buy it new and finished and perfect. That's the last 10 years of our life. The banter back and forth. Maybe when we're like 70 and we're retired, we can actually buy stuff that's decently nice. (laughs) I've come to just understand that that's our life. And I actually admire it now because I'm like, we just can make diamonds out of dust sometimes. The cookie crate is proof of that. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. So it just worked out great because uh, then we could have our truck in there. We had a great space for a walk-in for our parts store. Um, So Mimi was, was in there. Um, and then we also had rental space that we were able to lease out to people, mm-hmm. which was which was great as well. Could create started in 2019. Yes, but that was April. because I was selling them, putting it in the makeup orders. I was putting our cookies from Mimi's in the makeup yes. orders, and people were like, "How can I get my hands on those cookies? I want more." And uh, you tell John that he runs with it, so mm-hmm. he ran with it. And all of a sudden we were figuring out how to ship cookies to your doorstep because John was like, I want to receive cookies at my doorstep because yeah. you have all understood by now he wants sweets 24 seven. So that's how Cookie Crate even came about through all of that. And the only reason I put cookies in people's makeup orders is because I would always send like a little candy, but every Senate Inch distributor did that. And we had an established business that was like an LLC that had been running for years. So we were like, oh, this is established. We can easily put these cookies in and people won't be like, um, why is she sending like homemade cookies <laughs> in these orders? It was no, it was Mimi's cookies, like yep. a taste of Johnson City, Tennessee. So that's how that started. And then Cookie Crate just skyrocketed yeah. out of that. People just wanted them. They wanted yeah. to buy a dozen of them. And that's really where we you know, started right. doing the research on how to, you know, what our next steps were. Right. So I think really quick there, I got the LLC, mm-hmm. you know, went ahead and grabbed the names. Um, we went ahead and, you know, you talked to, before we did that, you talked to your, your followers to come up with a name. Yep. We gave that person free cookie crate for a year for yeah. coming up with it. And it's really cool because we had the cookie crate, got the domain. We did not have the Instagram. So there was somebody that already had the cookie crate mm. Instagram. And these people were from the UK. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to reach out to these people um, through my personal one and just say, you know, is there any way that we can actually, you know, get this name. Can I buy it from you? Um, but the crazy part, they were actually a cookie company, but they just did it on the side with two, it was two friends and they actually, well, no, you can actually just have it. I don't think I remember that. Yeah. It was crazy. And I was like, what? Okay. Sounds good. (laughs) If they were in the United States, I would have like shipped them stuff or gave them stuff, Yeah, but they were like in the UK. So, um, they actually sent it over to us and that's why we got the cookie crate. So we had the name, the Facebook and then also Instagram. So it's uh boom. Yeah. Crazy. So we're growing the cookie crate. Yep. That's going quickly all online. We didn't have the storefront at this point. It was just online. It we're was- doing it in the back of this commercial building that we're talking about that we bought in this huge warehouse. Nobody knows basically what you call a ghost kitchen where there's no signage out on the front. Nobody knows you're inside and what you're doing yep. inside. So it was very sketchy looking run down. Very it run down looking from the outside. We got super superior <laughs> health scores. I just would like to tell everybody that the inside was phenomenal where we worked. <laughs> yeah. Our, so basically what we had, I bought another food truck, turned it into commercial kitchen. And then, uh, you know, we got that permitted out through the health department and then we just kept it inside that building and that's where we baked. Yep. And we had one room that we had built for fulfillment and it was a tiny room. It's a box. For fulfillment. Yeah. Small little box, no windows. No AC, no heat. <laughs> and, I never uh, passed out in that room, thank goodness. Yeah, and that, and actually, in that baking truck, we only had a home oven. Twenty-four cookies at a time. Twenty-four cookies at a time, and it was tight. You could maybe get two people in there mm-hmm. at a time, maybe. I remember us. It was hot working in there together, and you being like trying to get past each other it was almost impossible, especially when I was pregnant with Jovi. I could barely fit in the truck yep. to bake cookies. It was it was a lot, but. You do what you have to do when you're building businesses. I think back when we're talking about this and I'm like, we sound like crazy people, but never once did I think <laughs> we were crazy when we were doing it. It yeah. was just like 
all a part of the process and we were scrappy and did what we had to do. Lots of lots of labor and extra hours on us, sleepless nights, all the things, but I wouldn't change it. It was great. Yeah. Okay. So we're building cookie crate. That's going up. We're having another baby. So now we're on our third kid during this time period. And at the same time, really right before cookie crate is when we started bear brothers. Oh yeah. There's more. <laughs> there's wait, so much. But wait, there's more. <laughs> there's always more with our past here. So We're that, almost done. <laughs> yeah, we are almost done, guys. But we started Bear Brothers and we started that with uh some friends of ours. And it was actually Jonathan Yates and Heather Yates. And um, you know, you met Heather through your church. Yeah, through M two O Mom's Morning Out. Yep. And you guys both were both talking and said, Hey, our husbands actually need a friend. <laughs> because they don't have any friends, apparently. <laughs> and we both liked cars, old cars and stuff. So, um, you know, we I met Jonathan, and then it just turned into a, a really good friendship where we met every Tuesday morning, you know, went over the sermon uh, the Sunday before, and just talked about business and life and, you know, the goods and the bads and just being honest with each other. Mm-hmm. And we did that for, I think, for probably about a year. And then we always talked about having a hot rod business or a restoration shop. And uh, we decided, well, let's just go ahead and do that. And we did. Of course you did. Yeah, we did. And we <laughs> our idea was to start and build our just a shop truck and just do it for fun. And halfway through that shop truck build, we got our first client. And then we got our second client. And we got a third client and fourth client. And it just hasn't stopped. And now you have builds through? Yeah, two years out probably right 2024. now. 2024? Yeah which is insane. Yeah. So we have employees now that work full time in there in the shop. And where is that shop? Oh, the shop is actually part of our building that we bought. Oh, isn't that funny? There was a three car garage that we had no idea no what idea. purpose it would hold. And None. there we are. Yeah. And there you go. Thanks which, God. Yeah. Right. Thanks God. Which we're actually moving across the street yeah, we here in the next spot. couple of months. Yep. Out, they outgrew it really quick. So they're moving, but that is going to be opened up for another opportunity here soon. We'll share more about as that mm-hmm. unfolds. Yeah, not a it. business that we are starting. Not ours, but Spoiler alert. very exciting. <laughs> so yes. So Bear Brothers is building up too. So we have Discount, Mimi's, My Makeup, Cookie Crate, and Bear Brothers. We have five businesses and three babies. At mm-hmm. some point I get pregnant with Cree. She's in 2020. <laughs> They're fourth during that time. But right before that, it was during my pregnancy, we sold discount, right? We did. We sold our first well, business. No. We sold, we sold Mimi's first. Are you sure? Yep. We sold Mimi's okay. first because, and we also knew that we needed to sell discount because we saw the potential of cookie crate. And we knew that with how many kids we had, that it just wasn't beneficial for anybody, the family or employees or businesses to have that much stuff, uh, you know, growing through this process, I always thought that, you know, Hey, I'll have seven, 10 businesses. I'll just have hire people to run them. It will be great. Cause I love starting businesses, love talking about it. Um, but we realized during that time that one it is hard to find really good employees mm-hmm. that can run those for you. Um, and we couldn't do ourselves. No, um, so, we were strapped then. Yeah. We had to let go. So we knew we had to let go of Mimi's and we found a a really nice couple that was able to buy it from us. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we actually sold discount a year later to one of my employees that worked, you know, for For, five years. She was the manager. Yeah, she was the general manager and was able to sell it to her. And it just worked out for both of us. Yeah. Um, And that way we could totally focus on Bear Brothers and the Cookie Crate. I can't tell you how much of a relief I felt when we got rid of those two businesses. Huge. It just felt like, well, not only just because it was, you know, off of our plate and we could take a deep breath that we had two down, Mm -hmm. (laughs) three that we were focusing on, but also it was like a really good feeling knowing that the two people who bought each of them were like excited and eager and looking for exactly what they got. So it was just beneficial for everyone. It felt great. And it's just been so nice to see that just be successful on its own without us involved. Yep. And actually Mimi still does buy the cookies from us. So we wholesale them out to them. Yep. Um, So it's still actually our cookies in the truck. Mm -hmm. So um, we're still a part of it. We just don't own it. Yeah. Which is really fun. So we get to see it and still be that little connection with them. Yeah. So now here we are (laughs) caught up to speed, at least to 2020 (laughs) where we had our fourth child. So here we're four babies in and we've got... Bear Brothers running at full speed right now. Cookie Crate running at full speed right now. And I started the build out. Well, that's true. And I do Cenogen still on the side right now. I don't do it 
anywhere near the capacity that I used to, but I have my loyal customers and people who find me randomly. And so I still ship out once a week, but yeah, that's what we've got going on. Yeah. But we, I mean, and we didn't even really touch on the build You're right, out side yeah. of it, but the build out was huge. We did. Yeah. For cookie crate, we were two years in, is that right? No, we were two well, and a half. We were about a year and a half. Oh, a year and a half. Yeah. We started in April of 19 and into 2020, we decided to do the build out. That's right. We decided to have a brick and mortar shop in the same commercial building that we're talking about. So exactly where we were running it as our ghost kitchen is what we built out to our new kitchen. And we did that just because we knew we just couldn't handle, we were having issues with that truck. Um, you know, it just would not produce much. We had two full-time bakers and I was doing it as a third baker. So we'd have someone come in early in the morning, then they switched out at lunchtime. And then I would come in at nighttime and work through the night until the next morning baking because because we couldn't produce enough. Right, because we were working um, off a home oven. <laughs> a home oven and no space. So we realized we just had to, I mean, we were really kind of forced into that. Yeah. Um, it was a scary time because you had the pandemic yep. that hit. We were um, having a kid. And we had no clue that was going to happen, just had a kid. And um, yeah, it was, it, was a, you know, it was a lot of prayer. Plus it was like a very it was the biggest thing we've done where it was like a really big price tag that mm-hmm. we just like gulped down, like, okay, we're doing this and trusting, leaping on faith again here. Yep. <laughs> God sure hope you're in this. <laughs> and he was, of course he totally always is, was, whether yeah. it takes off or fails, he's in it. But it was a little mortifying to do that. And I was scared cause I didn't want a storefront. I wanted to stay behind the scenes and just, I liked being in a place where it was like, you know, nothing was flashy. It wasn't up front. People, I don't know. People were on the other side of the camera and opening up a storefront meant people were going to be coming in and, you know, meeting people. I'm an introvert. So it always makes me nervous. I think that surprises people Mm -hmm. that I don't feed off of being around others. I actually love being home by myself (laughs) with a book. That's what refuels me. Um, But it was really cool because I didn't know that but I got pushed outside of my comfort zone. And now we have this storefront and people come in from all over. Like that still shocks me that people come from Texas or, you know, California or North Carolina or all kinds of places to come see the cookie crate or to come meet us because they followed our family and they feel like they know our employees or us. It's just so stinking cool, man. It's so cool. And we love it. Like I love the connection Mm -hmm. and I wish I could go back and tell Megan who was like, don't meet people. This is going to be helpful. (laughs) But like, Hey, this is actually going to be incredible and really humbling. Yep. And it's really, it feels good that we actually have a nice place for our employees. It does. For all those years at Mimi's we've, I really did feel really bad about, you know, kind of the situation that we had, but we couldn't afford anything else, Mm -hmm. you know, but they had to bake in that hot truck. You know, it was a tough job. Yeah. So it's nice that now we have this really nice, clean, you know, um, beautiful bakery, beautiful, big bakery that there's plenty of room that's cool or hot, depending on what you want. Yep. Um, so we're so blessed to have, uh, the opportunity to have actually a nice place. Yep. So that brings us up to speed as to (laughs) where we are now. Our main focuses are the Cookie Crate and Bear Brothers. Those are the ones that we show up for each and every day and um, truly love and find so much joy in doing. Uh, We have, uh, I can't even think of how many employees we have at Cookie Crate, like eight, nine. Yeah, we have have eight right now. And then two over at Bear Brothers. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to be able to support other families and people and get to know our work family on a deeper level and have them. And I'm so grateful because it means I get to stay home and (laughs) raise babies, (laughs) but also work part-time. I feel like we have a better understanding over these last 10 years for time management. Yes. Not good at it. Not, Slowly learning. I not still great. have an issue with that. <laughs> <laughs> you do have an issue with time uh, management, but I do too. I really think I should get so much more stuff done in a day, but it's just not possible. John's always like, okay, it's Saturday. We have nowhere to go, nothing to do. So we're going to get this, 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 and this done. And I'm like, John, we have four kids, like lunch, <laughs> naps, baths. Half of that is already taken up with just taking yeah. care of them. <laughs> this joking? is like a daily conversation we have. <laughs> it just, just will never sink in. Yeah, it's okay. All right, guys, I hope that has given you just some encouragement, especially for any small business owners who are listening right now and just fighting their way through living life, raising kids, getting through school, starting a side hustle, building a business, whatever it might look like that you can do it, but it takes hard work and determination. Keep moving. 
Exactly. So I hope that's inspired you just a little bit today, hearing our story and giving you a glimpse into the last 10 years and what we've built and where we've come, but all of it not being glamorous and perfect by any means. Thank you guys so much for listening today. We think that we'll have something for everybody here in this podcast, whether you're a small business owner, a parent, a single person, whatever it might be. We have a lot coming here in the next year of episodes that we're excited to share. I hope that you'll join us in our next episode in two weeks. We'll have just returned back from our 10 year wedding anniversary Ooh, trip. Man, that is awesome. I'm so excited. Yep. And we decided the next episode, we're going to share things that we've learned about each other in the last 10 years. And we will not talk about this beforehand. So it should be a surprise for both of us a little bit. (laughs) Oh my goodness. This could get interesting, you guys. We will see you in the next one. See you guys. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you liked it, leave us a review. If you're following on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button. On Instagram, follow us at The Modern Tulip. And we will see you guys in the next episode.